Welcome back to the Strongest Guild on YouTube and possibly the final video of 2020. And I have to say, 100 Years Quest has had its ups and downs, accompanied by some insane twists this entire year. But I don't think any of us expected this most recent one. But before we get into wherever this crazy Alintir story is taking us, recently I was able to pick up some pretty special fairy tale relics from Japan in mint condition that I've been meaning to show you all. That's right, the original fairy tale magazines. These were made starting from 2012 when the anime was airing every Saturday on TV Tokyo at 10.30 for the very first time. All of these have beautiful covers and artwork inside, plus some posters and bits of info and artwork from kids around Japan from eight years ago that was sent in to be featured. Now, I'll be posting some more pics of these over on Instagram and Twitter, at soul underscore animation, if you want to go find me there and check them out. But starting with issue number one, an absolutely beautiful cover of Natsu and Lucy that I've always loved. Before I even knew these existed, you know, I had seen these images and some of these pieces online, of course, and they're absolutely beautiful. But issue one is Welcome to Fairy Tale. Now issue number two is Garna Island, another another pretty cover with the whole gang right there. You got Grey, Urza, all of them already introduced by the time this volume comes out. So people knew who they were by then. And issue number three is called Ghost Ruler. You got this beautiful beautiful Lucy front cover right here. I absolutely love it. You got Natsu in the background. You can see little Princess Lucy over here. It's got like a special little chapter inside this one. And then of course you got the back, that classic Natsu and Lucy image from the movie. On to issue number four though, Paradise Tower. You have an epic, epic looking Urza cover right here. Absolutely beautiful. And then another movie promotion on the back of this magazine. Whenever that was releasing, the movie had to have been coming out because these were all released at different times. Remember, they were just coming out in Japan. Issue number five, The Battle of Fairy Tale. And you got the whole guild featured on the front cover. Lucy looking very beautiful right there at the bottom. And again, promoting the movie. Tons, tons of cool stuff inside of these. Issue number six is Nirvana. And another one of my favorite pieces that Hiromashima has released because I don't know, I just love the way Wendy is drawn here on the front cover. And I think it's just a beautiful cover of the gang. And then you also have the beautiful swimsuit art on the back of the entire guild right there. And then lastly, on to issue number seven, Edelis featuring one of my favorite pieces ever of Natsu and Lucy, just absolutely beautiful. You got King Natsu, Princess Lucy right there. You got Happy sitting there on the side. And this was the last one released. You got the, the guild again in their swimsuits on the back, but beautiful, beautiful Hiromashima art. I had always seen this online before I even knew that these were coming out or releasing, but I always wanted to know like where that artwork came from and when it was made. And now I know so many years later that this artwork was made for these magazines. Now, I'm assuming that these were released to encourage people to buy the manga as it was releasing. This is about 23 volumes worth of content in total here in these magazines. But of course, the extra special thing about these at the time is not only that they were huge, printed on much, much larger paper, than the manga volumes were. But of course, this beautiful, beautiful artwork on the covers that you could only see here and probably had never even been seen before 2012 or whenever each of these volumes had released. And you already know that that artwork can't even be seen in the manga. But speaking of the manga, here we are eight years later in 2020. And if you need to catch up on this year's worth of fairy tale manga, 
you can grab the volumes that have released thus far online and read them right now from the official publishers and distributors in Japan over at global.bookwalker.jp. And as always, if you use my code SOLANI, get five bucks off any manga on the site, including Fairy Tale. That link will be in the description. And if you've only ever watched the anime, I highly, highly suggest you check out the Fairy Tale manga at least once so you know how much better the original manga was and how amazing Hiro Mashima's original art was before it was adapted into animation. It's beautiful seeing the old school magazines that are not easy to find in such mint condition being eight years old, but you can access them all right now on global.bookwalker.jp and check out the original volumes yourself. So go get some free ones with my code Solani. Go check that out in the description. But back to where we left off with these wild chapters and kicking things off with a Miraxis cover page, that's something you don't often see in the manga. I feel like Mashima has always been so unsure of who Laxis would end up with, but I'm definitely glad they're leaning more towards Mira Jane as it should be. They're literally like the hot, cool couple of the group, and I actually wonder how many people really ship them. If you all want to let me know in the comments if you ship Laxis and Mira Jane together. But back to this new world, Urza and Wendy fighting some random snow people already. Urza's mother continues to appear giving advice to Wendy, and I'm actually starting to wonder what will go down when Urza finally realizes this. It's like obvious Urza can't stay mad at Wendy, right? She's just a child, so I don't know. I feel like it could be more interesting if Jalal or someone was seeing Urza's mother. I don't really know, but anyway, something happens with this new superior spiritual arts convoluted nonsense that isn't even necessary for me to explain, especially because Urza and Wendy fighting a minion character, you already know that they're going to defeat isn't very interesting anyways. And the same goes for Natsu and Grey, but at least this Hakune snow minion has an interesting character design. But on to my favorite part of the chapter, it's been way too long since we've had Lucy in a sexy outfit and Taurus tagging along to gawk at her and eventually tell her to immediately take her clothes off. And the flowers panel, that was absolutely hilarious. Discovering more new world quirks with Best Girl and the cow, this is all this manga really needs. You can totally get rid of half of the other characters that have been introduced and the overcomplicated dragon story and the pointless fight scenes that Natsu is going to win every single time, but I do agree with this giant woman. If only Mashima was drawing Lucy again. Please, Mashima, you had to come back for this one. I, I wanted to see this drawn in, in Mashima's style. But hey, at least we still got some Lucy fan service. I mean, isn't that why we're all still reading this? Because if you're still reading for Nalu like I was, I got some bad news for you. The snow god lady's power is to seduce men with, and I quote, the women in their hearts. So naturally, Juvia is the only woman who appears to seduce Grey. She surrounds him with hearts flying off the page. But when we get to Natsu, it's not just Lucy as you'd expect from Everything that had just happened with Nashi, with Edelis, with them getting married. Wendy, Kana, Urza, Mira, they all surround Natsu naked. And specifically, Lisana says, I could have been your bride. He even hits Lucy away from him first as Lisana holds on to him in the same panel. After all that, after Edo, Natsu, and Lucy married, after them having a kid, Natsu calls all of the girls who are, quote, in his heart, friends and Lisana starts talking about marrying him. The more and more Nalu become a thing and then this happens? It's like sometimes I don't even know where they want the story to go or why Natsu's character wouldn't develop to want to be with Lucy this many chapters later. Like is 100 Years Quest really going to end without Natsu and Lucy actually getting married? Is, is everybody just gonna be friends forever? I don't know, Dro drop a like if you want Nalu. Let me know what you think about this in the comments. There 
are a few more action scenes in this chapter, but I'm not concerned with that or what to think of this. Again, if you all want to go read FT, global.bookwalker.jp, that link is in the description. I mean, go check out this chapter. Let me know what you guys think because this is just not what I was expecting. You can check out the OG fairy tale magazines on Twitter. I'll post some more pics of those. And don't forget to subscribe and join the guild for all the insanity to come in 2021. Keep up with everything that's going on in our guild discord. You can also find that link in the description and talk about fairy tale there. Hope you all have a Merry Christmas, but if you don't ship Nalu, I got some bad news because you're gonna get a lump of coal.